Hey, moron! Hey, moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the whoa water boy, dude! Well, good Monday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody had a great weekend. The weather was beautiful here, and uh, I just can't wait. We're sitting here, as you can see up here on the clock. 87, 87 days away from kickoff of the 2029 season. I cannot believe it, but it is coming quicker than you think. We're probably about six weeks away from training camp opening. Should be opening somewhere around uh, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd. We don't have the official schedule yet, but sometime around that time is when it'll start. And so we still have a lot of work to do. Um, even though the talking heads have told us, and, and this is where I, I've gone through my emotions with the Dallas Cowboys. We typically always have the same thing. We lose in the playoffs, okay? We lose in the playoffs and don't get the thing that we want the most, which is another ring. We get told how bad we are, how we're the biggest disgrace in the NFL. And then we, of course, go through free agency where they tell us we don't do anything to help our team. And then we go through the draft, and they tell us our draft is just kind of meh. And then, all of a sudden, it all evolves into the Cowboys are Super Bowl contenders. That's right. Don't quit your day job, baby. You look so good in red. Boy, do you look good in red. Mm. Love it when my wife wears red. That's, that's her color. I'm sorry. I, I, I digress. I, I got distracted by the beauty. It was literally like the sun just rose into the room. Okay. And then we get told that the Cowboys are Super Bowl contenders, which if you think about it rationally, how is it the Cowboys are Super Bowl contenders if you told us that they suck and they don't know what they're doing as far as free agency? And I will go ahead on the other side of the equation and say Washington and the Jets have spent more money in free agency over the last like 10 years than anybody else. And I don't believe the Jets have made the playoffs. I can go ahead and say that the Denver Broncos went all in and got Russell Wilson, which they're paying like, you know, $40 million this year to not be on their team. And even Randy Gregory, who was passing the Dutchie from the left-hand side and the right-hand side, along with others. And they are in the process of still rebuilding. Yet the Dallas Cowboys have done nothing big in free agency for ever forever and somehow they still win 12 games although you know everybody says well the cowboys they got it they always have a cake schedule you know they get they, they got the nfc east so they got like like five six wins there all the time well if if the K nfc east is such a cakewalk then how come the eagles which are the greatest team of all time it's not like winning you know even more why isn't the commanders of the giants just kind of beating the cowboys ass right and you're going to tell me that, you know, in years where we've had the NFC South that have been like, you know, literally seven and nine won the division one year. You can't look at them last year and say that was a great division. Baker Mayfield, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won it. And look what's happened to the Saints. Look at New Orleans. They're ass ass. OK, so don't give me that. It's hard to win 12 games. And here comes the, yeah, well, you're just satisfied with regular season wins. Well, I will say, if you don't get regular season wins, bro, you ain't got a chance in the postseason. So you got to learn to crawl before you can walk. And you got to learn to walk before you can run. And you got to learn how to run before you can sprint. It's all a process. And one of these days, one of these days, they're going to break through. And it might be this year. Because I smell blood in the water. Now, what's cool is, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. And in fact, I want to say after the 2020 season, which was dismal, we started doing live streams on Sundays 
with channel members being able to call in and be part of the show. And uh, we are going to be doing a more call-ins because we want to get the pace of you guys. Uh, we're actually going to be getting a separate phone line that will be just the Joe Boo Sports hotline for you guys to call in. And probably some of y'all have to get dumped. Uh, some of y'all just have to get dumped because I know some of y'all trolls will be up calling. But be that as it may, it will be the Mint Mobile Joe Boo Sports hotline. Just a little tease there for you guys. Um, we started talking yesterday. I had a question. I proposed a question. Because we listen to the talking heads out there that say the Cowboys, they need to pay C.D. Lamb, they need to pay Dak Prescott, you know, they need to pay Micah Parsons. Well, that's their perspective. That's not necessarily the Dallas Cowboys. And because what I said was, You've got to do something with Dak if you really want to keep him, I think. Although, you may have a wink-wink deal where Dak Prescott understands, we're going to bite the bullet this year, get rid of the 55, and then we'll be in a better shape to give you that max contract, even though it'll cost us more, um, next year. Because we've gotten rid of that 55. Because right now, you're dealing with $90 million. You know, Do you want to do a deal where you're adding $90 million to you know, a max contract? If you can get rid of a good chunk of that money... It's not quite as bad. That, that's my thought on there. But who knows? Who knows what's going on in the Cowboys? But the Cowboys basically do their deals in training camp. They like doubling up. CeeDee Lamb, who, of course, is on his fifth-year option, you want to get that deal done. But then again, I'm sitting here thinking they let Amari Cooper's deal expire. He went and hit Washington got an offer from them, and ended up coming back and signing with the Cowboys. Now, Justin Jefferson's gotten his. we got Jamar Chase that's out there that will you know, want to get his deal and so on. And so you look at his cap number at 17. You go ahead and get him done. If you just use the Justin Jefferson model, you could save about $9 million this year and have him under contract for like 15 next year. In which case, you're saving $9 million, so you could really look and say, we're saving $9 million on this year. You're applying that to next year's salary because you're probably not going to spend it because the Cowboys are cheap. And you could really look at that and say, next year's is really $6 million. It's one way to look at it. But I was saying, Micah Parsons, though, the Cowboys always go to the end of a contract. Always. Usually franchise, franchise tag guys because the contracts expire. Think about it. D-Law, Tony Pollard, Dak Prescott, uh, Dalton Schultz. They would rather go ahead and pay a franchise tag price to a guy than pay them early. So why would we think that the Dallas Cowboys would pay Micah Parsons early? They got the fifth-year option. They got the franchise tag, and they're willing to use it, especially with his contract being only $5 million this year for a cap hit. His contract is actually only paying him $2.4 million. So for the Cowboys, yeah, paying him now may keep that number down lower in the future like it would have with Dak Prescott, but when Dak signed his $40 million, which was kind of at the top end of the quarterback composition, comp uh, uh, compensation, the first year was $17 million, the second year was $19 million, the third year was twenty six. It finally ballooned to the last year, which is this year, where it went to fifty nine. If you do that with Micah Parsons and kicking the can down the road, it's not necessarily a bad thing. For Micah Parsons, well, the longer I wait, you know, I don't get the, I, I will never get that money back for this year. That's the bottom line. And you can look at it and say the Cowboys could have signed Dak Prescott after year three to his extension. Instead, they paid him only $2 million his fourth year and then franchise tagged him because that was the best thing as far as numbers wise for the Cowboys. Now, the thing with Micah Parsons is, Micah wants to be the highest paid. Well, Justin Jefferson isn't going to be the highest paid 
non-quarterback for too long. You know, Tariq Hill's already been out there talking to his agent. And what happens is when people get paid, like Zach Martin, you know, he was paid at the top of his market, and then two years later, hey, I'm underpaid now, bro. You need to pay me more. So I don't know that necessarily paying somebody early is really going to matter in the grand scheme of things because they're going to turn around and say, I want more of the pie. But Micah Parsons, per pro football talk and Mike uh, Furio, says, and thank you, Captain Obvious, that Micah Parsons would be willing to wait for his next contract. Basically betting on himself. Cowboys defensive jack, let me read some of it to you. Cowboys defensive tackle, jack of all trades. Micah Parsons is willing to wait for his next contract. It's not a bad strategy with one big caveat. Eventually, he will be the highest paid non-quarterback in football. The current high water mark is $35 million per year. And new money set six days ago by Vikings receiver Justin Jefferson. The Cowboys would be wise to offer Parsons 35.1 or more in new money now because the number will only keep going up. So yes, Micah's time is on Micah's side. Until the time comes for a new contract, he'll be woefully underpaid. His paying for 24, uh, in 24 is $2.9 million, and that's a joke. We should pull an Ezekiel Elliott and show up for training camp until he gets what he deserves. Now let's stop here for a second. This is where I know the people say that we're just YouTubers. We're not credible media and that um, we don't know what we're talking about. But I keep hearing things from the traditional sports broadcasters that we all know are wrong. I still hear people talking about Dak Prescott's contract being $59 million cap hit. I've even heard some say it's a $61 million cap hit this year. And that's not the case. We all know that it was 59, and then they restructured that $4 million of, and got $4 million of, restru- of relief, and it's $55 million. Here's the thing about holding out. The last collective bargaining agreement, the NFL gave some, some add-ins for the players. They ended up saying, you know, you guys like to smoke weed because, you know, and, and we're, we're team players. We hear it helps with concussions. We're not going to test for it like we used to. You're free to do that. And in it, they ended up getting things like the 17-game season. Now, I don't know what they're going to give up to get an 18-game season. And it seems like Roger Goodell wants that sooner than later. And um, the collective bargaining agreement has still got like eight years before it's supposed to be redone. So I'm not sure exactly if that'll be an amendment or what. And what the NFL will give up for the players to get that. Maybe it'll be, we'll have one preseason game or something. Um, but one of the things they put in is the, I call it the Zeke Elliott rule. See, it used to be you could hold out. And once you finally came in and signed the contract, everything was good. And the fines, which were you know minimal, were forgivable. But they changed that to where... Holding out ends up being that you're losing real money. You're losing real money on there, and it's non-refundable. Now, maybe Micah Parsons would look at it and say, yeah, you know, I'll eventually make a, a boatload of money and so on. But if you miss, I think, a preseason game, it's a game check. So it's a sizable amount. Hence, you've seen very few players holding out in training camp anymore. Because basically, it's not worth it. So my question yesterday was, would Micah Parsons have a hissy about not being paid this year? And would the Cowboys change what they're doing to accommodate him? Because that's honestly like paying him two years ahead, which is something they don't do. And I'm kind of like, I don't see Micah Parsons getting a deal this offseason. I just don't. But then again, the Cowboys maybe are going to change up the shit that they do and do something a little different. Um, my Wi-Fi, am I having Wi-Fi issues today? I see this just kind of spinning here. Let me refresh it. And it is now time. Oh, here we go. TJ Jefferson go. stopped us in our tracks. Let's, let's, let's get TJ Jefferson. Our prep I like TJ. Today. And he said, I will do the Dallas Cowboys win-loss game today mm-hmm. on June 6th. Ooh. 
Let's go. Good loss. It's TJ Day. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. Big D Day, if you will. I need music. He's got the props. He's got the Cowboys flag. It is time for TJ Jefferson All right, TJ, what do you to got? say to the people. Let's go, baby. In win-loss format, how the Dallas Cowboys are going to perform in the 2024 National Football League season that begins at the Cleveland Browns week one. TJ Jefferson. Here we go. Week one. That's a W. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. A good thing you're saying that now before Kevin Stefanski joins us in 25 <laughs> minutes on Zoom. <laughs> home for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, that's a dub. 2-0 and oh at home. Late window on Fox. This reeks of Tom Brady's America's Game of the Week. Home for the Baltimore Ravens. We're going to take the L that game. Okay. Ooh. And then turn right around at the New York Giants on Thursday Night Football. West Side Connect. That's a dub. Three and one at the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday Night Football. Ooh. You know what, guys? On the road, we're going to take that L. Three and two at home against the Detroit friggin' Lions. Late window Fox. You know what, guys? We're going to take that L. Oh, my goodness. Whoa, three. Dude, DJ. that means they're 3-3 three and three going into a bye week, which means <laughs> it will be Please, God. hair on fire. <laughs> Please let that happen. Hair on absolute fire. <laughs> yeah. Coming out of the bye at the San Francisco <laughs> oh, 49ers. It's not going to get better because, as you know, I've always said, the Niners are the hurdle the Cowboys can't get over. So... That's an Uncle L. Cool. So that's a three-game losing streak that takes wow. a month long to process and play out with that bye week mixed in. Three and four at the Atlanta Falcons. Okay, now we, we start to get our mojo back like Austin Powers. Yeah, baby. That's a W. Four and four home for the Eagles. Late window. CBS, Romo and Nance in the house. At home? Yep. Taking that dog. Five and four. Monday night football home against the Texans. Here we go. You know, I hate to say it. <clears throat> but I think that's an L, guys. Five Whoa. and five at the Damn. Washington Commanders. Oh, come on. You know. You already know. That's Six and five home for the Giants on Thanksgiving. Give me that win on Turkey Day. Gobble, Seven gobble. and five home for the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday Night Football. Now, let me explain this to you. We've got 11 days off between the Giants game and the Bengals game. The Bengals have a tough game the previous week against the Steelers. Oh, look at you mapping so it out. I'm going to say because of those factors, that's a WC in the Eight and five right at the Carolina Panthers. Come on, that's a dub. Nine and five home against the Buccaneers. Oh, we're going to eat that dub like Jameis said. Ten and five at the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, you know, that's a home and home thing. So, unfortunately, I think that's an L. Ten and six home for the Commanders. Come on, don't get asked me that question. Eleven and six, TJ Jefferson. Oh, God, if you're listening, help. All right. Does that win the division? Uh, well, he split with the... You can take down the music now. Uh, that splits with the team that we're assuming that's the closest, mm -hmm. which is Philadelphia. If you're thinking the Commanders have a surprise season, being 2-0 and against them, sweeping them, that, that will definitely help out. Certainly if the Commanders have any sort of wild card. I don't think 11-6 and six is good enough. Is Bill Belichick the coach for the eleven and six? Because well, three and three into the bye week, oh baby! Yeah, but those well, are eleven and six. No. Those losses. How though. about this? Well, I love this. Let's extrapolate the this. The Niners. Out. Eleven and six, Dallas as a division winner means what? They're the four seed, three seed, or the four seed, right? Probably it's three seed. Possible three. Probably maybe not. Probably mm -hmm. three. Maybe not. I don't see 11 wins well, coming out of the second. South. Hold on a second here. The the good part about what you did, no, TJ, is you up. had of their six losses, half of them are AFC losses. So that means you have them at um, you have them at 11 and three in conference. Okay. Which is a pretty damn good that would conference be great. record. You've got them four and two in division, 11 and three in conference. So that, that I think that might be good for the three. Uh, but last year, dude, a Packers team came in and they, 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 you know, they were the seven, right? Yeah. Look out. I'm um, just saying, mm -hmm. pal. Interesting. I don't know. That, that means you're, that means you're taking on a team that might be second. You got a Rams team coming in or, or a Niners team, potentially, if the Rams perform very well. You got to do better than that. Have a better shot, I think, at the at a, at a an NFC Championship run. But we'll see. God, I can't wait for this thing to play out. My just goodness. for the record, I went back. Look, I've been one game off every year. No, you've I've been, you've this. been, you you have not been pie in the sky. Been very yeah. realistic, yeah. 
Catch the Rich Eisen show there every single go. day on the 11 and 6. Guys, here's what's funny. <laughs> I've been saying the last three years, I say 11 and 6 or 12 and 5. And I'm going to stand by that number. I honestly believe that the Cowboys, the thing that they always seem to do, as everybody keeps talking about all these free agents that everybody goes through and signs, the Cowboys find guys where others don't. They're homegrown talent. You know, when you start looking at a guy like a Terrence Steele, who is supposedly fully healthy now, that replaced Lyle Collins, when you think about some of the other players like Tony Romo and things, um, some of the role players that they've gotten, basically that nobody thought about, heck, um, you have every year some guys that you've never heard of that come around and become very, very significant for the Cowboys. And I believe the same thing will happen. Uh, we don't know what's happening behind closed doors and how some of the guys look. We killed the Cowboys for letting go Randy Gregory, and Dorrance Armstrong was actually better. Now we're killing the Cowboys for letting go Dorrance Armstrong. Maybe Sam Williams is better. Maybe the rookie class this year will make an impact. Stay tuned. We'll find out about all of it. As always, people, I appreciate y'all. Have a great day, and don't forget, tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, we have our live stream. And I hope you guys tune in then. Until then, peace out.